It is Monday. There will be postseason games played this week. J.P. Morosi on the inside corner. Good morning. Can you stand it? Reports out of Chicago that Tony La Russa will retire. We were on our production call this morning, and D.Rose said one of the best to ever do it. What's the latest? Good morning, Lauren. Uh, yes, we expect that later today that news will be official with the retirement of Tony La Russa as the manager of the Chicago White Sox. First report over the weekend was Bob Nightingale. And Lauren, when you think about the big picture here, obviously uh, Tony has had some health concerns over the last month or so. This was not how he envisioned or hoped his tenure in Chicago, his second tenure in Chicago, would come to an end. But on the advice of his doctors, this is the decision that he has arrived Two, and obviously the White Sox this wintertime, we expect, will begin their search for a new manager. And I think to, to D-Rose's point, as, as you referenced, Lauren, today should be a celebration of one of the extraordinary careers in the history of Major League Baseball. Long a member of the Hall of Fame, he came back, really out of loyalty to Jerry Reinsdorf and the Chicago White Sox, to go back to the team that he first managed back in the 1980s uh, and certainly the, the White Sox were able to get to the postseason last year. This year injuries, inconsistencies, they never really got going. So uh, Miguel Cairo was going to finish the season as their manager obviously for the White Sox and certainly for Tony again today is going to be I'm sure more than anything Lauren a celebration of all that he has achieved mm. in Major League Baseball and, and many people around the game paying tribute to him here today and certainly at some point the conversation will come to who will the next manager of the White Sox be? Uh, names like Pedro Grafol, Clayton McCullough, sure to get consideration, but I think for today, it's all about Tony. And the incredible career should be the focus. Coming back after the resume he had, JP, is incredible. I was scrolling this weekend, saw Shohei and the Angels agree on $30 million for 2023. I don't know why this was curious to me. Tell me about the timing of it. Well, Lauren, it is unique uh, that you have a, a contract of this magnitude signed in the final days of a regular season, but it makes sense for a couple reasons. Number one, this is a huge number, record-setting number for a player in that service class for truly a unique player in the history of the game. So I think we all understand uh, why he is deserving of that sum of money, the one-year $30 million. I also think it gives the, the Angels and Otani some closure at the end of this season, entering what could be a very uncertain offseason. We know the larger context of the organization, uh, the possibility of a sale coming up in the, in the weeks or months ahead more likely. So that gives the Angels some certainty as to one of the key members, probably the most valuable on-field asset uh, right now for the Angels in Shohei Otani. And also, Lauren, it probably gives the Angels, if they decide to pursue the possibility of a trade this winter, as was at least on some level explored at the trade deadline, knowing what that number is going to be gives the Angels, gives any potentially interested team some certainty mm -hmm. in that regard. Also sort of eliminates this from the plate of, of a new owner. You would not want to buy the Angels and then have to think about, okay, do you really want to go to a hearing room in salary arbitration against Shohei Otani? Probably not. So I think that it just gives everybody a lot of certainty in what is, aside from this, a relatively uncertain offseason mm, in Anaheim. That's a really good point. I didn't think of it that way. We are the beneficiaries, right? Just getting to watch him play and perform. I saw Sandy Alcantara, JP, tweeting out thank you to the fans and the Marlins teammates. And I thought, is he done? And they're not going to pitch him in his final start. This won't affect Cy Young, will it? I don't think so, Lauren. Right now, Sandy Alcantara, for me, is the choice for the NL Cy Young. Think about this. He has thrown 228 and two-thirds innings. Only one other pitcher in baseball has reached 200, and that's Shane Bieber. So Alcantara has thrown basically 30 more innings than everybody else in the National League this season. Uh, so I think when you look at that, the, the caliber of performance that he's put forward, to me, he is the clear choice. And Don Mattingly, we heard D-Row mention it a moment ago, how hard the, Mar the, the Marlins are playing for him. They certainly want to do right by him, and he wants to do right by them in turn and protect Sandy, as he said with the reporters in, in Miami in recent days. He wants to make sure that he's healthy entering the offseason. So that's where it is. Certainly Sandy Alcantara's resume is complete, and what a resume oh, yes, it is. Yes, indeed. Don't take that baseball from him. Old school. J.P. Morosi on the inside corner. Happy Monday to you, Robert. Thanks, take Lord. it away.